I want to do some more examples of eigenvalue, eigenvector calculations, um, just because they may be unfamiliar and we haven't yet done a 3x3 three three example, so let's go down and do one. So the one I want to start with is a nice matrix called the Arnold Cat matrix, for reasons that maybe we'll discuss later in the course. Um, so it's two, one, one, one. So we want to find the possible values of lambda, possible eigenvalues, uh, and then we want to find the eigenvectors for each of those. So first we need to write down the characteristic polynomial det of a minus lambda, no, sorry, a minus t i. Um, that is det of 2 minus t, 1, 1, 1 minus t. That's 2 minus t times 1 minus t minus 1. As usual, if you're sitting here just looking at this video, pause the video, do the calculation for yourself, skip forwards to see if you got the right answer, and if not, then maybe watch it back. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Um, okay, so this is t squared minus 3t plus 2 minus 1, so plus 1. So the roots of this polynomial are 3 plus or minus square root of b squared, so that's 9, minus 4ac, so that's minus 4, over 2. In other words, that's 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So I'm going to use a trick here. Rather than doing two separate cases, a plus case and a minus case, I'm just going to leave plus or minus in the notation. If it gets multiplied by a minus sign, it's going to become minus plus. And uh, then so our answer will end up with a plus or minus in for the eigenvectors. And you can handle both cases at once if you do that. So let's see. So, um, so to find the eigenvectors, we need to solve a v equals lambda v. We need to solve uh, two one 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 x y equals three plus or minus root five over two x, y. So let's multiply the matrix out. We get 2x plus y, uh, x plus y, and then on this side we get 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2x, and 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2y. So the first equation is 2x plus y, so y equals, let's subtract the 2 onto this side, subtracting 2 from 3 over 2 is going to give minus a half, so what we end up with is minus 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2x. And the second equation, uh, let's keep the x on this side and take the y over, so subtracting one lot of y from three halves will give us one half, so we end up with one plus or minus root five over two y. As usual, the second equation follows from the first equation. I'll let you think about why that is. Um, so we just need the first equation, and that tells us the eigenvector. The eigenvectors are x in the first entry and then this in the second entry, minus 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2x. So this is the eigenvector for the eigenvalue 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. What that means is if you take a plus sign in the lambda, you have to take a plus sign in the eigenvector. If you take a minus sign in the, in the um, lambda in the eigenvalue, you have to take a minus sign of the eigenvector too. It's just a nice way of expressing 
uh, what we want. If they'd had opposite signs, then you know this one would have been a minus plus rather than a plus minus. Let's do another example, this time a three by three example. Um, okay, we're gonna take three halves, five halves, three minus a half, minus three halves, minus three, one, one, two. Just because not everything in the world is a nice looking matrix. So what's its characteristic polynomial? If we subtract t off all the diagonal entries, we get 3 halves minus t, 5 halves 3, and then minus a half, minus 3 halves minus t, uh, minus 3, 1, 1, 2 minus t. When we take its determinant, I'm going to use this cofactor expansion. So we're going to get 3 halves minus t times minus 3 halves minus t times 2 minus t minus minus 3. That's taking this first entry into account. Next we have things for this second entry that's going to give minus 5 halves times uh, minus a half times 2 minus t minus minus 3. And finally, I need to take the third term on the, on the first row, which is 3 times this subdeterminant here. That's going to be minus a half times 1 minus minus, so plus three halves plus t. Phew, yuck. Again, if you're watching this, do it by yourself, skip ahead and check you get the same answer. So um, what are we gonna simplify first? Let's simplify these second and third terms here. So this third term is three times 1 plus t, so that's 3 plus 3t. Three this guy here, we've got, um, let's just do some working out over here. We've got minus a half times minus t, so that's t over 2. Uh, we've got minus 2 over 2, so that's minus 1 plus 3. So that's t over 2 plus 2. We're multiplying that by minus 5 over 2. So that's going to give us minus 5t over 4, minus 5. So already we can see we're going to get the minus 2 here. This is going to give us uh, 3 minus 5 quarters times t, which is seven quarters of t and our last term up here is I mean, just work it out and uh, pause the video and we're back you can see I've been busy so I claim when you multiply this whole mess out it becomes uh, minus t cubed plus 2t squared minus 3 quarters t um, so with no constant term and if we add that onto this, what we've already got, we're going to get um, minus t cubed plus t, 2t squared. The minus 3 quarters t is going to um, interact with this 7 quarters t and just give us 4 quarters t, otherwise known as t. So the polynomial in the end doesn't look too bad. we end up with minus t cubed plus 2t squared plus t minus 2. So 
part of the reason I used a big ugly matrix was, you know, just to give you some of a sense that I'm not always going to ask you about nice looking matrices. And part of the reason was because even though the matrix is ugly, the characteristic polynomial is actually quite nice. So one of the easiest ways, ways of solving a cubic is to guess the answer, substitute it in, check. And if you get the right answer, then you can kind of divide by one of the factors of your cubic and you're left with a quadratic, which you can solve. That's much easier than using the general formula for a cubic. And one of the best things to guess is t equals one, because, you know, it's a kind of obvious guess and it works surprisingly often, basically because, you know, people like me don't have very much imagination and that's what we uh, that's what we stick into our examples. So um, indeed, if you check t equals 1, we're going to get minus 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 2. So t equals 1 is a solution because that gives you 0. So yeah, this happens surprisingly often in examples. So to get the quadratic, um, what do we do? Well, we say this factors as t minus 1 times a quadratic and to figure out the quadratic we need to divide this polynomial by this t minus 1 so we do polynomial long division I don't know about you but first time I ever understood long division with numbers was when I learned it with polynomials it makes a lot more sense with polynomials um, okay so Let's see, if we do um, minus t squared, lots of t minus 1, that's going to give us minus t squared plus, uh, sorry, t cubed plus t squared. And let's uh, use that to cancel this minus t cubed here. So we subtract this off and we end up with t squared plus t minus 2. And now we uh, want to use uh, plus t lots of t minus 1 to cancel this t squared we end up with t squared minus t when we subtract this off we're going to get 2t minus 2 which now if we think about it that's just two lots of t minus 1 looking at this calculation there's, there's a lot of similarity between what we've just done in long division and what we did when we were doing row reduction Sort of to echelon for uh, cancelling the highest order terms um, at every step. So these are both um, both row reduction and long division are special cases of some more general thing, um, which goes by the name of Grobner bases, uh, which is a much more general thing that allows you to cancel higher order terms. Anyway. Again, I dig digress. Uh, the quadratic term is therefore minus t squared plus t plus 2. And what are the solutions of this? Well, it's minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, so minus, minus 8 over uh, minus 2. So this is um, minus 1 plus or minus 3 over minus 2. In other words, that's 1 minus a plus 3 over 2. In other words, that's uh, 2 if you take the plus sign or minus 1 if you take the minus sign. So the hard bit in this is first figuring out this determinant because it can be a mess and then the really hard bit is solving this equation often guesses uh, often works to just guess the solution and then divide out by the corresponding factors to get a equation of lower degree and then either guess again or use the equation uh, the equation for the solutions if you have one but we're still not done so we found the three eigenvalues The eigenvalues are uh, 2 minus 1 and what was the other one? 
Oh, one. Yeah, of course. T, t equals one is a solution. We still need to find the eigenvectors. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste our matrix. I'm going to get rid of some of these confusing extra decorations. Uh, oh, actually, I can copy and paste it from here, can't I? Where's it gone? There it is. Okay, there's our matrix A. So we want to solve A, V equals lambda V for each of these three numbers. Um, I'm just going to do it for lambda equals 1 uh, because you've got a finite amount of patience watching me. You can work out the other ones for yourself. Uh, so we need to solve this equation. We're going to get 3 halves x plus 5 halves y plus 3z equals x from the first row. We're going to get minus a half x minus 3 halves y minus 3z equals y from the second row. And we're going to get x plus y plus 2z equals z from the third row. So that third row looks uh, like the simplest, right? That's telling us x plus y plus z equals 0. So let's say z equals minus x minus y. Um, so we could use that to substitute in um, the other two equations. So let's see the. Let's see. So the fir first equation is uh, a half x. Plus five halves y plus three z equals zero. If we multiply through by two, that's telling us um, x plus five y plus six z equals zero. And the second equation is uh, minus. So that's going to be uh, a half x plus five halves y plus three z equals zero which is exactly the same so we only actually need one of these two equations at the beginning and the other one is uh, z equals minus x minus y which if we substitute in um, we're going to get x plus 5y minus 6x minus 6y equals zero which is telling us minus 5x equals y. So our eigenvectors are going to be of the form x minus 5x and then minus x minus y and y is minus 5x so plus 5x. In other words x minus 5x 4x. Okay, I'm not going to work through the other two, but if you want to know what the answers are, then for the eigenvalue 2, the eigenvectors are going to be of the form x minus x, x. And for lambda equals minus 1, the eigenvectors are going to be of the form uh, minus x, x. Oh, actually, sorry, I should uh, keep that as x, and this one's minus x, shouldn't I? 